Uh, the women's game, uh, I thought, lived up to the hype with Iowa and South Carolina dirt. Did you catch most of it? I did. I actually watched the entire thing. It was, uh, nah, the, the ending was kind of a thud. Like the non-foul, foul, 12 seconds, dribble out the clock. Yeah, you knew it was over. Always kind of a bummer way to end a championship game. But the first three quarters or so before South Carolina pulled away was really entertaining, and I watched every second of it yesterday. Yeah, I thought it was great for him. I know the UConn game, it's weird when the Final Four happens because, <laughs> yeah. Like, we don't really talk about the previous games much. It's more like, hey, the championship's here or the championship happened. Friday was much more controversial than yesterday. What did you think of the <laughs> UConn foul? What did you think of it? Uh, everybody got very angry with the tweet. I, I learned the, the tweeting about Caitlin Clark can get dangerous. Um, did you tweet? I did send out a tweet. I said it's rigged. <laughs> and everybody got oh, upset no. like I was talking elections <laughs> oh, and it was no. a whole thing and my mentions won't <laughs> stop. So I was like, all right, I'm just backing away. I was just trying to be tongue in cheek. They obviously didn't call down and tell them to call that foul in that moment, but they were keenly aware of the ratings boost that she would bring to the national championship. Here was my thing. I everybody kept tweeting, it's definitely a foul. Let's watch the Zapruder film and screen by screen frame. Clearly, she's moving while setting a screen. Like, I don't think anybody disagrees with the fact that it is a foul. The, the issue that I had with it, and I, I enjoy now watching basketball. I did this on Saturday, and I did it again yesterday. I counted every moving screen. And it's hilarious because one happens on nearly every possession of offensive basketball. There's a moving screen 800 times throughout the course of a college basketball game. And it was just a thing for me of, like, that was such a special ending, and Iowa was kind of peeing down their leg a little bit. Oh, my God, are they going to choke in the Final Four? Here comes UConn, a final opportunity, and boom, whistle, yep. basically game over. I, I don't disagree that it was a foul. I understand the pushback is, well, then what do you have to make somebody bleed to get a foul call late? It's like, well, no, but that's a – that's one that they let go 97% of the time, and then they call it in the biggest moment of the game. If they uh, See, here's the thing about that. I think you're right. You can watch a game, and you could count moving screens that are never called. And you can do that for the men's, for the women's, for the NBA. The Golden State Warriors built a dynasty on moving screens. Uh, Draymond Green specialized <laughs> in screening exactly like that. There was one of a finals game against the Cavs where David Lee grab, like, literally grabbed two guys <laughs> that Steph Curry was running off of. He's like tripping, knees out, no whistle. Well, uh, Gino had mentioned in the post game they didn't call one of those on Iowa. You're telling me Caitlin Clark, who comes off screens routinely, doesn't have one yeah. screen that's being illegally set. Yeah. My thing is, if that whistle doesn't blow... Whether you have Iowa or UConn, are you screaming illegal screen? Or are you just captivated by the moment in the play? You're sucked into the moment. Right. So I, you can, by definition, say it's a foul. And by the way, almost everything looks like a foul in slow motion. So I'm tired of the slow motion crap. <laughs> frame by frame by frame. It's ridiculous. We do this in the NFL. Too. Look at that. It's clearly a foul. It's like, yeah, they run at like four seconds at 40 yards. Yeah. Good luck seeing that in real time. The thing that's unfortunate about it is you just didn't let them figure that out on their own. And here's the other take. Go back and watch the play. I thought Iowa snuffed it out, and I don't think UConn probably ends up scoring anyway, but I still want to see if they can. I still want to see that shot, the opportunity to win the game right there. And by the way, I don't think it, you know, a lot of the... I thought they covered it the right way, SVP. I watched a little of the Tarazi, Sue Bird stuff. <laughs> I think they covered it the right way, but my takeaway wasn't that the whole game was ruined because of a bad call. It's a bad call. It's a call I don't prefer in that moment, but it was a great basketball game. UConn yes. came out, went up double digits, blew that lead. Caitlin Clark got hot. They came back. They almost, as you mentioned, pissed down their leg, but... A foul call changes things. It's just it's an unfortunate ending, but a great game. Look, it wasn't rigged, but they were keenly aware that it would be very beneficial for them to Iowa, for Iowa to win that game. It just would. Like You think they huddled in the timeout and they're like, hey, <laughs> yeah, let's get them a foul call here. The reason I know that is because I'm the fan that they're trying to reach. I'm that guy. I'm, I am the case study here. If that championship game would have been South Carolina versus UConn, Maybe I watch bits and pieces of it. I'm, yeah. It's on in the background of the house. I'm, I I would not have sat down and said, hey, let's write. The game starts at noon. I'm turning it on. And I know I got a collection of buddies who were the same way. There was just something about watching Caitlin Clark and the year that she had and the storyline around her that you wanted to see her in a national championship game. I've seen Gino there a million times. Mm -hmm. I've seen South Carolina win multiple titles, both incredible programs, no disrespect to either of them. I'm the fan that they're trying to reach. So I know that they knew – I, I would have been fascinated to see, because there's a chance they get to 20 million viewers for that game yesterday. 
and what the number would have been for South Carolina UConn and how many Caitlin Clark truly brought into that game. I mean, it would have been a good number. It wouldn't be. Would have been a great. It wouldn't number. be twenty million. No, I'm maybe not a ten, true. maybe nine. Yeah, yeah, probably somewhere in there, which is a great number. It's an incredible number for a women's championship game. That's quite literally the NBA <laughs> final <laughs> number last year. It's a massive number, but it's also not twenty million, and you're losing ten to eleven million viewers. I, I, we'll get into some more college a little bit later, but I, I saw your tweet. Did you feel like, because I watched a little bit of the Tarasi Sue Bird stuff, I think some of the stuff that was being tweeted was being taken out of context a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you feel like people were hating on Caitlin Clark? I did. Yeah. I did. I The Tarasi stuff was, I don't know, she had a, a line about getting to the WNBA and she's going to learn a lesson the hard way. Well, to which yeah. people pointed out, like, UNESCO averaged 18 a game as a rookie. Like, yeah. There's... For elite players, but Caitlin's averaging thirty, so thirty to eighteen is going to be a bit of a of if an that's what she ends up her. averaging. Yes, if, if she averages she does. eighteen, I I don't know. To me, she also I, I, and this is maybe more f- philosophical of a debate, but she you know basically said that she would take Beckers over Caitlin Clark number one overall pick. That's being the UConn gal sure. going for the UConn player. That that's for sure bias. The welcome to the WNBA thing. There was a backstory to that, and that's the context part. Kelsey Plum was on the broadcast and told a story. Of Diana Taurasi's hello to Kelsey Plum in the WNBA, Mm -hmm. she basically said, how's your family? And when Plum answered, she smacked Plum in the stomach and (laughs) ran out and got the ball and scored on her and then just winked at her. (laughs) And that's what she's talking about is like, people are going to bait her. Yeah. They're going to like fake say hello to her and they're going to treat her like a rookie will. Yeah. I, and, and look, there's, that's what that was. It wasn't like she's going to suck. She's not going to be a good player. It was just like a. there's going to be an adjustment that sure. she's going to have to make. Sure. And these these women are not just going to let her come in. And this ain't Iowa UConn. This ain't <laughs> Iowa whoever. This is welcome to the pros. Sure. I, I'm now rooting like hell for her to average 30 points a game as a rookie. Oh, me too. Because I just there there it, it wasn't even her, but it was who was the old timer who trashed Lynette Woodward. Like, like, what are she we doing She was at here? the Iowa game when she broke the record. They rolled yes. out the red carpet for this woman. They gave her flowers, they congratulated her, they gave her a standing ovation, and then she went to some banquet and basically pissed all over it. Said, it I like, still wow. hold the record because I didn't have a three-point line and I had to play yeah. with a men's ball, so I hold the record. Caitlin Clark doesn't hold the record. and I, There was just a really weird energy, and this exists in the NBA, but I feel like the league should be slightly different because the NBA is established, people watch it, it's a popular league, like it doesn't need to grow. I mean, it well, could, it, does. it yeah, should. it does. Sure, but you get my point yeah. of like, they're they're on that plateau and they're yes. fine. The WNBA is striving for that. They're striving for eyeballs, they're striving for attention. Why don't more people take it seriously? Why don't more people watch? Why don't we make more money? Why do we have to go to Russia to play in the offseason where we get arrested for having weed? Like... Here comes this person who has brought, for whatever reason, more attention and more eyeballs onto women's basketball than anybody in history. You're breaking records. You are beating NFL playoff games with Final Four and Elite Eight games, let alone not even knowing what the championship ratings are. Like, I would be welcoming that with open arms because a rising tide lifts all boats. Mm -hmm. And if she brings those viewers to the WNBA, you're getting more eyeballs, you're getting more money, you're getting more ad revenue, you're selling more tickets. That's good for literally everybody. There's nobody that can really have that effect as a rookie in the NBA because it's the NBA. And so there's a lot of pushback against her that's just been really strange to kind of watch the last couple of days. I think it's just... um... A lot of gals never got the attention. And I get there being a, a hinge of jealousy there, but I still would go the other way and say, man, this is great for our sport. This is awesome that people are paying attention. Maybe they'll learn about this player or me or that player because they're watching Caitlin Clark. What sport, very quickly, and then we'll go, what sport's the best at the older players giving the new age players credit and compliments versus I feel like the NBA is toxic in this way. Oh, God. Maybe the WNBA is as well of, like, back in our day, it was better. Instead of just saying Giannis would have dominated everybody. Is it baseball by default? Baseball's a good one. I think it's hockey. Hockey's pretty good. Like Gretzky and stuff when he's on the broadcast, Gretzky, he's good. Gretzky, Messier, Chelios, yeah. all those guys. Yeah. Because in golf, you got all the tech, the advancements in technology, and so they look at it like, hey, we used to hit per seven woods. Yeah. You know, they get angry about it. At football, it's like, well, football you— Football can be a flip of the coin, depending yeah. on your ass. If you're an off, like a quarterback, you'd be like, dude, you should be able to rip my head off. Now right. you can't breathe on a guy. It's a different game. I Yeah. Baseball, hockey, probably my answer there. Yeah. I don't get it. I just don't get it. It's Admit that some of these players are better than other players in your league in the past. It's great for the sport, man.